Hmm. Edlin, eh? Memory management. The problems we had with DOS 4.01. Welcome to another episode of Kombinator. Witajcie wszyscy. Here today we will look at this wonderful AT machine. It is a... Well, it's in an IBM 5170 AT case, but the guts of it are from an EverX system. Uh, it's... Uh, you have your XD keyboard here. Mono monitor, you know, the right equipment from 1986-ish. So we're going to look at this uh, computer in detail, how it was put together, because I had to put it together, it didn't come complete. Uh, there was lots of trials and tribulations with that. Selection of parts, uh, and we're going to go through the software a little bit too, why not? Because I've uh, loaded the 10 meg hard drive up with, uh, with unlikely things such as games. So yeah, we're going to be having a look at what's in there, what's, uh, how it came to be, and the, the hard drive and its contents. So let's have a look at that, starting with the startup sound, the noises this wonderful computer makes when it turns on. So today we are going to be assembling and building a 286. And another 286. We'll use this monitor for one of them. This lovely Model F keyboard for one of them. And this AT standard keyboard for the other one. Okay, these are some of the parts we're going to be using. Right here we have an EJ VGA video card, uh, IDE controller, low density floppy, high density floppy, 2400 baud modem, 42 meg ID hard drive, 10 megabyte MFM hard drive. This is just an I.O. with two serial ports, a parallel port, a game port, uh, various cabling. I don't know which one I'll be using because of length. The controller card for the hard drive, a network card, and a mono card out in the back there. So we're going to go ahead and put this uh, 286.8 back together. Uh, I was going to do the 286.10 first, but... Uh, just as I was about to button everything together, the keyboard controller interface failed, and now I have this thing to troubleshoot. Anyways, that's for a later video. I want to do something pleasant, and let us put this together. So let's start with the regular components. I'm not taking it apart more than this, because it works, and it's old, and I don't want to mess with it. So we're going to start with too much. Uh, we're going to start with... The I.O. controller for the keyboard, or for the keyboard, for the hard drive and floppy. So first we're going to plug the battery back in and connect that in there. Oh, just a good shot of the coprocessor and processor. That's interesting. So set that to mono and put the first card in. that momentarily. The next card to go in will be the the communications and printer port RS-232 and an LPT and a slot in right there. Then we have a beautiful 2400 baud modem. It's connected to COM2 already with the jumpers. No need to do anything else. And the last thing we're going to be putting in here is this mono only with another parallel port card on it. So I've already configured that to be LPT2. So this computer will have two COM ports and two printer ports. So that's that. Now I'm going to put the drives in. These were out to retro brighting on my porch. Uh, so there's the 720K drive. Uh, 
I was using a white face, but it didn't match the gray. So that was actually like an orange. So after retrobiting, it looks pretty good. I had to actually build the uh, the front face plate mount. So I just used old IO shields. I epoxied them in there and there. Uh, drilled a tiny little hole up here. Drilled that in after aligning it properly. And then just put the standard rails on. The rails are mismatched because the um, I, there's a shortage of rails in this house. Right, so in that goes. Put it in the bottom tray right there. It should align perfectly with the edge of, yes, that's it. And there's enough resistance here that it won't come out because, surprise, surprise, I'm also short on these retainers. And uh, because the other case didn't come with any floppies, there was only two in that one. So I used one here and then one in the other case. So anyways, uh, I think we could uh, put the power supply in now. I just took it out to just to have a look at what was going on here. It looks fine. So we will connect the little Molex to the 720K. Screw that in later. So that's in. We'll put the 720 or the 360K low density. Nice rails here by Everex. You can see that. I don't know if you can see that, but it says Everex for excellence. Front, left. So yeah, these were a thing back then. I'm very glad manufacturers have largely stayed away from rails, although I have seen them recently in certain systems, but yeah. So see how that one is like, it needs that retainer. So yeah, I see, yeah, they line up. Well, I'll get a front shot of it later, but they do line up. So the Let's do the hard drive. Okay, so this is the Type 1 10 megabyte drive. I have adapted rails from an IBM cash register, actually. And they they slot right in. I guess they haven't changed that. The, the cash register was from like 2004, also an IBM model. Uh, so these, these slide right in. I had to bend that out to get the screw under there. But it is removable. Uh, so this giant drive is uh, a 10 megabyte Type 1. So it gets it slides right in here. And it is also fairly tight. It doesn't require the actual latch itself because listen to this. I didn't even hear that, but it clicks into place and it stays there until you push these tabs in on the side. So yeah. Quite pleased with that as well. So, control cable is thicker than the data cable. This is the data cable. It's, if you've seen my other videos about this drive, it's been featured twice. One about its performance compared to others and one just on its own. I was super excited to have it and I still am. Finally finding a use for it. Although this may be a temporary application for this computer as the uh, the drive is a bit on the small side, even for a computer this age. A computer uh, with this kind of spec sh should probably have a 20 meg hard drive. I might be able to get one. Alright, now let's plug everything in. Make sure the switch is off. Monitor on. Actually, I'm going to reposition the camera. Okay, so we're going to fire it up. We're going to keep this... Uh, original hard drive test I showed in the last part uh, in, the, in with the computer. Uh, test from late 1986. Well, third quarter anyways. Keep that in there. This is the drive, this is my boot disk, which also serves as the BIOS setup. So that goes in there. Alright, let's turn it on. Just do one last check because I don't want to lose another 286. 
going on. It's a Nintendo cartridge. Gonna blow on it. All right, black to black. Batteries plugged in. Nothing's touching here. Drives are all connected. Wires are in. Okay. Oh, right off the bat we have. Okay, that looks good. That was a quick post there. Press F1 key. And we got a working XT keyboard. And it's going to boot from that drive, which is now in really good shape. It was like kind of yellowed and shitty. I didn't configure it as just some DOS 5 disk. So now we run G setup. Check and replace batteries. Yes, it has. Okay, let's do this. And set up RAM parameter. Yeah, so what time is it? It's 89 o'clock. 89.67.41. And this 161st month, 111th day of uh, the 116th year. Excellent. That, that's so accurate. Okay, let's change that. Uh, it is currently 24 hour clock, so 21.08. Uh, the date. The date is four twenty one, twenty twenty. Yesterday was the magic day. Floppy not defined. Oops. No, I don't do anything like that. Two. Uh, this is a double density number two. And the B floppy is 720k, so 4. Hard disk 1. 1 is number 4. Hard disk 1 is type 41. No, type 1. Type 1. Type 1. Type 41 is on my other system. And base memory 640k. Expansion memory 384. Math code processor is installed, and the primary display is a monochrome, so everything needed to be adjusted there, not one thing was right. And exit. So I'm going to take this out, it should boot from there. Okay, we're back. Apparently I just needed to jiggle some cables around. Uh, these things are fragile and old. So we have on here DR-DOS from 1991. I think that's a bit too new for this system. And it takes up, you know, a whopping... Well, a whole 2.2 megs. So I'm going to be putting in DOS 3 because it's just error correct and I've actually never installed DOS 3 so I uh, just want to put that on there first before I screw everything down as if I had put it together I would have had that error so all right let's do that okay so I'm gonna boot from this this is a backup disk I don't actually have the installer files I know I've just shown that I have this disc, but I only have the part two. I don't know where part one went off to. I've got uh, DOS 5 on both of them, but uh, these are high density discs and DOS 5 takes up even more room. Okay, format complete. Uh, we have 10.5 megs available, which is good. Sorry, 10.4 megs. So, it was interesting about that format. Again, I've never actually used DOS 3.3. I started with 5. So, what was cool, it showed which cylinder ahead was actually being formatted. So, I know this drive has no bad sectors uh, because I formatted it like four times in very recent history. So, what we're going to do now is. 
C drive. I'm sure this is how Microsoft intended this to work. So basically I'm just restoring a backup. So I'm on the backup. Okay, it tells you that way how much it has. Cool, so 9.7. So the DR DOS took up uh, another mega and a half. So we have that much more room to play with. This is actually very interesting because my first computer had a 42 meg hard drive. And I played diskette swap all the time on that thing. And this is going to be even I guess, worse. 